In the last video we saw how we can create a query in uh, LibreOffice Space and also we have our informations actually stored in these tables here. And in this video I would like to show you how we can use the data within LibreOffice Calc for example to create plots. So this is on the one hand a video about connecting or uh, retrieving data from the base program into Calc but also to creating a simple plot. And we will start with a scatter plot using just the information from a table. So to do that we have to start LibreOffice Calc and then we have to select a different view. We have to view our data sources. We can find that under view data sources. And you can see in my case there are already several data sources there but we will use the Miskovich database here and I want to on one hand retrieve the information from the uh, grave and specifically the measurements of the grave and make a scatter plot of the grave length versus the grave uh, width. So to do that I select the respective table here and that's graves. And when I click here on within the database on the graves I can see that here are the informations for the individual graves and we want to use the length uh, the length and the width and make a scatter plot out of them. One of the easiest way to get this data into the LibreOffice Calc sheet here down below is just to click here on the upper left corner say copy go down here and say paste. And with that we have all the informations here available in the spreadsheet. And with these we can easily start making a plot. So as I said I want to have a scatter plot of length versus width. To do that I select these two columns here and insert a chart. So this chart should be a scatter plot, so XY scatter. And essentially that's all we need. So in the back you can see that there's already a plot available and that's actually the finished results. Let's still go here to the next values. So with next I can more define how our data series are um, structured. Usually the data series, so the individual measurements for one of the series is in the column. So the individual measurements of length is in the column length and the individual measurements for width is in the column width. If it's the other way around you can say these informations should be stored in the rows. So each of the rows then um, represents one variable, one measurement or one variable and the individual measurements are then here um, one after the other. But this is not true here so we have actually our data series in columns. And the first row should act as label here. So length and width are the labels. These are the first row within our columns here and that's perfectly true. It's like it is here. So these should be the labels. If it's column wise you could also select here first column as labels but we don't have that here. Um, if we don't have the first row as label, if this is already a measurement, we can remove that. And then also this is evaluated as measurement. It doesn't make sense here because it's actually the string length and width, so we leave it like this. And in the next slide you can define the structure even more. So it's actually the results of what we defined before. The x values are here in the e column and the y values are here in the F column. We could change that around and we could also add data labels here. We could for example add the ID here as data label. When we do that I have individual labels for my individual cases. Okay we can still go to next and then add some nice titles. So um, 
burials of Miskovice, for example, and then length versus width. And we can name the axis here, for example, length, and here width. And we can also define where the legend should be, if the legend should be displayed at all, or where it should be. I'm fine with right, so let's keep it like that. Now we can click on finish and look to our final uh, plot here. So here we have the legend. It's actually not so meaningful, so maybe we just remove that. And again, there we can just go here and click delete or press delete and then this legend is gone and also I have made a typo here. I can also directly change this here. Doesn't make it better. So that way. And now we have length versus width. And I can click somewhere outside and then we have the plot here. So here's on a little nice diagram with all these points here. Maybe we also would like to change the style of the points. Um, so it's not line style, but icon style you can use different symbols here for example having here just round dots uh, this is actually not a round dot um, this is a round one and make it a bit smaller and also change the color to let's say this nice little green here and then our plot looks like this now we want to reuse that later on, probably in a presentation or a publication. To do that, we have to save this plot by export as image. And now we have different options here, how this image should be exported, either as PNG, for example, so it's a raster file then, or as um, PDF, which is more suitable, or SVG, which is more suitable as vector format for publication, uh, while PNG as a raster format is might be very good for using that for a presentation. So I name that plot one, and I can save that. And now um, let me show you the result. Well, it might take me a while to get there. I'm very sorry for that. Um, maybe I cut that out later on. Maybe not. Okay. Here we have the directory of our project and within that we can now see this plot here and can use that in a presentation, for example. Okay, that's it for this. So this time we just used um, a table as it is and made a plot, a scatter plot out of different informa informations there. Next time we will use, make the same, but we will use a query to collect the informations and we will produce a bar plot, bar chart, or probably also a pie chart if you really insist of using pie charts.